complicated to explain because we're just going to follow the ladder down the road. So what we see here is if we have one of these two things, we are going to have chronic scalp tensions at some point. I just want to skip a little and just follow the right side of the diagram. What we're looking at here, the next step is chronic inflammation. <laughs> What is up guys? Hope you're all doing well. Yesterday I received a question on my channel and normally I don't usually respond a lot to them because I received too many for me to be able to do videos on and respond on. But this one seemed kind of interesting because it wasn't the most ordinary kind of question and it has a lot of background story. So I thought it could be of interest to you guys to learn a little about this subject. So first off, I just want to make very clear that this is not medical advice. I'm not a doctor, I'm not your doctor, and I'm especially not your mom, and I'm not your dad. So whatever you do, it's on your own accord, and it's up to you to make the right decisions. And of course, you should always see a doctor before you're doing something stupid to yourself. This is what doctors are for. Now. I want to make very clear first off also that this guy already has a doctor and he is seeing a, a physician about his problems. Now if you are experiencing any kind of problems and you already are seeing a doctor, please go visit your doctor first or at least consult him before doing any kind of weird stuff. This is once again what doctors are for. Now that this is said, let's take a look at the question he sent me. So I'm just going to read up from my phone and you can just follow along up here on the screen if you'd like to just listen to my soothing voice out there. So it goes like this. Hi. Yeah, of course, first of all, thanks. Yada, yada, yada. I have super aggressive male pattern baldness that started as 16 year old. He says he is diffuse thinner. My regimen since I'm 18 is 0.5 milligrams to test right daily and 10% minoxidil every night. As I was 21 years old, I had a hair transplant at the front with 1000 grafts. It cost me so much money. Right now I am 25 years old and I have never stopped with medication. My hair loss is progressing. I don't know what to do. He is considering to do oral minoxidil, maybe start derma rolling once a week and he asked me if I had any kind of advice. And at the very bottom he also just adds O oh, and I think it's due to a dermatitis as I use too much hair fibers. I'm now using ketoconazole shampoo two times weekly, so on, so on, so on. So first off guys, as I just said, if you are using something like Dutasteride and you have been using it for let's say five years and you are still experiencing hair loss, to be honest, most of the time it's due to it's not being androgen alopecia anymore. Maybe it's something entirely different and you should go talk to a doctor and see what to do about that problem. The next thing I noted was that he said that he were a diffuse thinner. Now a diffuse thinner is not male pattern baldness. Diffuse thinners is usually something like telogen effluvium or anagen effluvium where the hair growth or resting phase is disturbed for some reason. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of videos on that subject for another time because it is very deep also. But it is an entirely different procedure that you need to do to combat that kind of problems. That's the first thing I noted when I read this comment. The next thing is that he said that he apparently wanted to begin to use microneedling, which means he might not have been microneedling at any point during his treatment. And lastly, he's told me that he now has dermatitis. So what I want to share here once again is a subject that I have been discussing before, but this is an entirely new approach. So this is why hair fibers is the devil's work if you ask me like you can use let's say you have like a spot that is bad still you can use hair fibers if you're going let's say on a date or something weird or something special but you should never use hair fibers daily or weekly or anything like that because there can be complications down the road and this is what we are going to take a look at today. So first off, what I want to share with you guys is a diagram and this diagram actually shows 
how hair loss progresses down different stages and why it becomes hair loss at the end of the day. As we see at the top of this picture, it is the precursors, which is, which is genetic factors or androgens. Now this is either you are genetic predisposed to losing your hair or you are having some kind of other factors play a role. For my case, it was steroids, so that would be the right side the androgens. And some guys, it is the left side, it is genetic predisposal, and for some, it might be a little overexposure of DHT due to too much 5 alpha reductase enzymes in your body. My case were very simple. Stop doing steroids, you fucking idiot. Other guys, they have genetic predisposals, and at the end of the day, this is where this diagram is super handy to explain because we're just gonna follow the ladder down the road. So what we see here is if we have one of these two things, we are gonna have chronic scalp tensions at some point. I just want to skip a little and just follow the right side of the diagram. What we're looking at here, the next step is chronic inflammation, which leads to androgen response, which leads to perifollicular fibrosis. Now this is basically where this, the skin around your follicular is going into fibrosis, meaning that it becomes very hard and dead and nothing can live there. Let's use like a desert for metaphor. At some point, even if you have stuff growing, at some point, everything is going to die and it's going to become sand and nothing is going to able, be able to grow there. That is what is noted in this diagram at this point. And now once again, if we follow the diagram, peripheral fibrosis leads to restricted growth space. If we just follow the arrow around the whole diagram, which means we go from the middle of the section past all the other steps straight down to hair loss. This means actually if you have perifollicular fibrosis, it doesn't matter if we use minoxidil. That doesn't matter at all because I'm going to show it right on top over here. What minoxidil does is that it actually targets the blood flow. The only problem is blood flow can help not restrict the capillaries and yada 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 so on. This is not important for this video because we are going to skip all these steps and just use a backdoor the whole way around and just go to hair loss. So if you're using minoxidil, it ain't gonna help. And there is actually a couple of studies that actually shows that people with telogen flavium actually had some slight improvement from minoxidil, but I think it was something like 95% of all the guys in the study just by own will decided to quit using minoxidil because it didn't actually do anything for them. If you are experiencing this kind of male pattern baldness or diffuse thinning, and it might be something else as I just said, this could be one of the reasons why minoxidil ain't doing a thing for you. The next thing I want to address is that he told me that he had dermatitis and he were using hair fibers a lot apparently I could assume and extrapolate from whatever he was writing there because to get dermatitis from hair fibers I had never actually been scared of dermatitis I were more scared of getting clogged pores but it it is it is entirely possible that it can happen I just never imagined anyone using it to this kind of extent but then again, I am a stupid human and I tend to think that how I think is how everyone else thinks. So this is why I wanted to make this topic. So the thing is, when we are talking about this, I want to show you another diagram. I have it straight up for you here. So the thing is, if we look at this circle and what I usually call it is that I call it the vicious circle of death for hair cells or whatever you can call it, a death spiral for your hair. Let's just bring it up to the screen for you guys and then you can see. Let's just assume that we start in the left corner because it is a circle a circle jerk motion or whatever you'll call it. The next thing is gonna fuck up the next thing and so on and so on and goes on to into a circle. So let's say you have acute inflammation. It's gonna trigger an androgen response. That's gonna, that's gonna trigger an increased sebum production. Now, when you have more sebum, you're gonna have more microorganisms living in your scalp area, which leads to more uh, inflammation because of, yeah, of course you have billions of creepy little fuckers living in your scalp. So what does the body do? It produces more inflammation that produce more androgen response and the circle goes on and on and on and on and on. And you can see if you don't stop it anywhere in this process, 
well, you're pretty much screwed at the end of the day. This diagram I want to bring back into the first diagram we just took a look at. So the thing is, if we look in the right corner or the right side over there, there is the sebum production that is gonna trigger more angiogenic response due to inflammation and so on. So this is what we can call a backdoor activation for this mechanism, meaning that if you have more sebum, then it just starts down there and from that place it is going to skip right over to inflammation, increase sebum production and back and forth. This is why it actually has these two arrows going back and forth because it is going to stimulate the one thing that is going to stimulate the other thing and just keep on going from that point on. So the thing is what it is going to stimulate straight after that is what we call peripheral fibrosis and this once again just skips all the other steps. So as you see, if you have increased sebum production and let's say you're using too much hair fibers and you didn't take very good care of your scalp while using minoxidil that also tends to give more dermatitis and so on and so on, well then you just went straight into sebum production, inflammation, peripheral fibrosis and just straight down to hair loss while the rest of us guys who took steroids and all kinds of stupid stuff had to take all these other kinds of steps the whole way down and we have way more places we can stop this process. So here's the thing, once again I link the study for this down below if you want to read up on that that is super cool, if you don't want to just don't. Minoxidil ain't gonna do shit for this at any point. The thing is, if you use something like dutasteride or finasteride on top of your peripheral auricular fibrosis, it can actually hold that from progressing any further. That is if we assume that you take care of your dermatitis and stop doing all kinds of stuff that will increase sebum production, because as we can see, sebum production is the only place that you can block that last path over there. Doesn't matter how much 5-alpha reductase you take or how much minoxidil you use or anything like that, you have to stop the sebum production at this point and if you're using fibers and you didn't have a very very good regimen to stop whatever dermatitis you had, this is a problem. I can tell you already now, minoxidil ain't gonna help anything on having dermatitis, so I would just skip that already as we can see. So the last thing, my actual only advice that I stumbled on porn and this is what made this video very interesting for me to actually respond to and as you can see it has been a very long response because there's a lot of factors playing a role in here, especially me not thinking that this is male pattern baldness anymore, but actually something entirely different and that could especially be that it started as male pattern baldness but then you started using all kinds of hair protocols and minoxidil and stuff and used hair fibers and then we just instead of using the original route we just skipped all the other steps and just went straight into fibrosis more or less due to sebum production and inflammation. So what we do from here is the only treatment that I know has any kind of effect on fibrosis which is more or less the same as scars is what you mentioned in the start. I don't remember the context of the question, but I remember that they were asked if he were to use derma rolling or microneedling at this point. Funny enough, microneedling or derma rolling is the only thing that actually induce a lot of growth factors to the skin and underlying skin areas in the scalp or in the face or whatever. This is why they use it to get rid of scars or acne scars or anything like that, which is fibrosis. So if you want to stop the fibrosis that is causing the restricted growth space and might be causing your continuous hair loss to progress even further no matter what you do, take care of the fibrosis. My recommendation in a fictional world because this is not a real advice or anything like that since I'm not a doctor as I explained is do microneedling treatment stop using minoxidil, stop using all kinds of weird stuff in your scalp, use your ketoconazole shampoo, keep your scalp nice and clean. Actually, if it were me, I would cut my hair short at this point and give it some space to breathe or anything like that. I don't know how long your hair is, but it seems like you're already applying a ton of stuff in your hair. And once again, hair fibers might have been starting your dermatitis to start coming 
but you need to get that down and you need to get rid of the fibrosis before your follicles actually can live anywhere. And once again, before I stop the video, if you want to read more about how microneedling is going to help prevent scars or fibrosis or anything like that, there's also a link down in the description. If you want to read up on that, you can just take my word for it, do your own research. It is entirely up to you. But there you have it, guys. If you're using something like minoxidil, finasteride, dutasteride, and it doesn't help, and you actually know that you are using hair fibers or any kind of weird stuff in your scalp, and you do know that you have dermatitis, well, a lot of studies suggest that it might actually not be androgen alopecia, especially if you have diffuse thinning. It could be something entirely different on the ladder of hair loss in men. So there you have it guys, that is my response to that question. And if anyone else is watching this video, you probably found it for some good reason, you search for it or anything like that. I hope this has helped some other guys out, or especially just the one guy who asked me. And that's all I have for you guys. Until